Hey everybody, good morning. This is Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and welcome to our live broadcast today. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, today I'm in the studio here in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to spend some time going through different styles of heat transfer vinyl. Uh, specifically, there was a comment from one of our regular watchers, uh, Mike, from up in Canada, uh, earlier this week, and he was asking a question about uh, the right product for tone-on-tone -tone printing, in this case, uh, the different uh, materials in the shade of, in the color of black, uh, going on to a black t-shirt, and wanted to get into the the little nuances of the material with the texture and the finish and the look, and uh, just get the right product for the job. And so I thought it would be a great piece of content, not only because it will allow us to compare um, the, the finish on the garment, of nine styles of heat transfer vinyl that we're going to try to get through today uh, over the course of an hour, but also because we'll be able to, I'll be able to explain to you uh, maybe a material that you haven't seen before, compare some of our uh, core materials for you and hit some of the top special effects. Um, and I'm guessing, I'm just guessing that today you're going to learn about a material or something with the material uh, that you haven't tried before. I feel pretty confident in that. So I want to thank you for joining. Good good to see you, Craig from Washington, Dimitri from Minneapolis. Uh, feel free to shout out who you are and where you're watching from. We are broadcasting into our various Facebook uh, channels and groups as well as live to our Stalls TV YouTube channel. So if you don't keep up with us on our YouTube channel, you need to because we are publishing a record amount of content, I would say. Uh, we release a new video right now every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then we do these live broadcasts and some webinars, which are also shared on that channel. And so you can consume all the content uh, in one place by subscribing uh, to that channel. It's just uh, youtube.com slash Stalls TV. So, um, let's give you a tour here of what we're going to use today. So I have the Max heat press behind me. This is our 15 by 15 inch uh, Max heat press. Um, I really like this heat press if you're looking for something basic uh, to get started with and a basic clamshell model that you know is going to be accurate because it's manufactured by stalls. Uh, here in the USA, you're going to get accurate time, temperature, and pressure. So I don't use that one much. And because we're using all black materials, I thought let's get out the uh, Max heat press, which has the black powder coated finish. Um, also, we'll be working with the materials. I have some rolls loaded there as well as some additional rolls over here. Um, I have our heated uh, weeding panel, which is something we don't use often. That's all heated up to show you how that works with certain heat transfer vinyls. And then behind me here, I have the GraphTech uh, vinyl cutter. This one's still the CE6000 cutter. We've since launched the CE7000, but I just grabbed one out of our demo room uh, here at the studio. So again, uh, we're going to be going through nine different heat transfer vinyls today, all available from stalls.com and we'll link through them uh, to them throughout. And we're gonna be focusing on a tone on tone finish. And for this job, I got the longest black t-shirt I can find. And it looks like at some point in time at, from Bella Canvas, uh, here we ordered 100% cotton. I think this is a Jersey dress actually. It's designed to be a dress. So that should allow me to put a lot of materials uh, down the front of that so we can uh, compare and contrast the finishes. So good to see Carolina Screen Printing joining today. Uh, good to see Patrice uh, joining from Fort Worth, Texas, one of my favorite places uh, to travel, some great restaurants in Fort Worth. Good to see uh, William uh, from South Africa joining uh, today. Edith from uh, California, Cindy from Colorado. Russ, good to see you as always. Glad to hear uh, your new heat printing ventures are going well. Uh, Laura, good to see you from Iowa. So lots of folks on today and should be a fun one. Um, let's start. So I'm on wheels here, at least the the computer's on wheels, so I should be able to move you to all the angles that you need to see. Hopefully you don't get dizzy with me. Um, I've started by pre-cutting some of the material because I didn't know if we'd have time to load all of them in the cutter. We certainly will do that with some of them. And I'll bring you up close to the uh, weeding panel right now. Let me snag my weeding tool. And um, I'm going to start with our four core materials and compare those for you. So um, I have ultra weed, uh, which is our U.S. Uh, manufactured material. It's our latest material that's out. Um, go through some of the features of that with you. I have uh, Fashion Film, which is one of those products that we've uh, sold for a long time. It's a favorite of many of you. Um, I have Premium Plus. Um, we sell that in two uh, tack levels for the backing, high and low tack. I'll talk more about that. Um, 
a lot of you love this and I love it too. To me, it's the best product we sell as far as finish on the garment, how soft and how stretchy it is. So um, there's some trade-offs to working with it. Uh, you need to have a, a sharp blade uh, and know your stuff as far as cutting it, but you can't beat the finished result if you have it locked in and you know your vinyl cutting game pretty well. And then Thermofilm, which is actually uh, one of our top sellers still um, in our CAD cut range. And a lot of people use it for sports, but with what I'm seeing with uh, textures and uh, thicknesses of material and gloss levels, I think you're going to like Thermofilm. And if you're creative, you can find some new uses for it uh, for projects like this. And so I'll let you draw your own uh, comparison, but let's start with the Ultra Weed. So this is our heated weeding panel. We also carry a big table if you're doing a lot of weeding. Uh, but this panel, I don't know, it's, uh, let's say I got a 20 inch roll here. So it's about, I don't know, 18 inches by 24 inches. Uh, looks like the size of the panel. So fits nicely on a standard tabletop. It heats up. Some people say it gets too hot for them. I want to say it's about 120, 130 degrees uh, temperature as far as the uh, contact here. Uh, some of you have found this out, but you can put this on a dimmer switch that you use for like a light. You can pick it up at Amazon, Home Depot, whatever, and uh, you can turn that down to be able to get the heat to reduce. Um, so great little tool, uh, less than $100 um, because heating your heat transfer vinyl makes the weeding process easier on any hot peel material. And so ultra weed is a hot peel material. So I just cut a very simple word today since we're going to be reading weeding a lot together. Um, it's just tonal, but you see how easy that is to peel away even some of these uh, thin lines. Uh, they don't break when you have it on the weeding panel or when you're using a product like ultra weed. And uh, one of the things I like about this product is not only is it US manufactured, um, but it has that sticky backing that a lot of you like. So not gonna give you the super duper fine detail that you can get out of fashion film, but definitely the fine detail that most of you need in your business to create the looks that you want, has that tackiness to the backing, which allows it to hold to the garment when you're positioning it. And I would call this a matte finish, but you'll see when we put it side by side with some other products, it's not quite as dull as the Premium Plus, um, but there's some other benefits. You get the sticky back and you can cut it with any cutter as long as you don't have too much blade sticking out. Don't need a whole lot of downforce because it's thin. Um, for those of you that have used Ultra Weed, we'd love to hear you chime out your experience on any of these materials as we're going through because I can speak all day, but it's better for you guys to share amongst each other on your feedback on the material. So Ultra Weed, uh, great product and we'll link to it. You can check it out. Um, there on the website. So that's Ultra Weed. Now, Fashion Film is another product we sell. Uh, Fashion Film is very similar to Ultra Weed. Actually, we developed Ultra Weed um, to eventually replace uh, Fashion Film. And uh, some of the big differences are um, Ultra Weed, I feel like, is an easier weeding experience, especially for mid to large size designs. While you can't get the super duper fine detail you can get with Fashion Film, uh, you can get uh, really good detail. Um, fashion film applies at like 320 degrees for 15 seconds, whereas ultra weed, I can go down to, uh, 280 degrees on cotton, which is what we'll use today, actually 300. So I can do all the materials, uh, but I can go as low as 260 with ultra weed on performance polyester or tri blends to not get the scorch mark. As long as it doesn't have 50% or more cotton ultra weed will do the low temp. So we will have fashion film in our lineup. Uh, for a while, but for those of you that use it, I wanted to show it today and I wanted you to be able to compare the look on the garment uh, to Ultra Weed so you can uh, check it out. And yeah, um, Laura chimes in and I just want to share uh, her comment. So she loves the Ultra Weed, can't wait for more colors and would especially love 20 inch rolls. Um, this whole pandemic thing kind of threw us for a loop with what we expected to do at the launch of Ultra Weed. We're still committed to growing it to offer both 12 inch and 20 inch rolls, hopefully by the end of this calendar year. And we are adding a lot of colors, actually four new colors just got manufactured that should launch um, over the next week. Um, and those colors are a pale yellow, a Vegas gold, a Kelly green. Come back to me, pale yellow, Vegas gold, Kelly green. It's not gonna be there, mystery fourth color uh, that you'll find out. but. We'll have those products weeded. And I'm going to heat apply these in a second once I get these four core products down uh, before we go into uh, more. Um, next is Premium Plus. And so again, if you took fashion film 
in Premium Plus and merge their features, that's the best way I can explain Ultraweed. We wanted the low temp of Premium Plus, but the production attributes of fashion film. And so that that created uh, the Ultraweed product and we wanted to make it in the US. Now, just to move away from Ultraweed for a second to make sure I give proper respect to Premium Plus, uh, this is also one of our top selling materials and customers that like this, love it. So make sure you share uh, if you love Premium Plus or your experience with it. Um, Really the Achilles heel of this material is if you don't have a sharp blade and you don't know how to accurately extend your blade because it's a super duper stretchy and soft material. Um, honestly, I think it feels better than screen printing on a garment. Um, it can stretch with leggings and sports brawls and compression gear, um, uh, neck gaiters, these sorts of applications uh, Premium Plus is built for. But I have a lot of customers that just use it on t-shirts because they want the absolute softest vinyl uh, that they can get. And I'm telling you, nothing feels like premium plus. Now we do have it in a low tack and a high tack. Um, we're actually seeing the high tack sales, even though that was a, a new addition only about a year or so ago, we're seeing those high tack sales um, overtake the uh, low tack uh, sales in the product line um, right now, but you can go with any style. And actually um, looks like I didn't get a real accurate cut on this because I was just loading material after material. Um, but I will try to fight through the weeding. I may have to recut this one because if you don't cut this one accurate, you're going to get like skipping and it's going to be uh, tough uh, to weed it. And so I'm not even getting the cut lines clean. You can kind of see it there where it's pulling up the A. Um, it's just not uh, cut accurately. If I kind of put my finger in to pop that out, I can probably break it through, but uh, you can see this one's not cut accurately. So I'll do that again here in a second. Uh, I'll reload that and do a test cut and dial that in. Uh, but Premium Plus, you're gonna love it because it's a super matte finish. You can buy it in the low tack version, which is great for like sports numbering. If you do a lot of larger designs, you're probably gonna love that version. But if you do a variety of designs, including left chest and small logos and detailed uh, shirt graphics, I would recommend the high tack because you're gonna be able to do better detail and you're also gonna get the advantage of a hot to a warm peel when you're applying it versus the low tack, which is a little bit more on the warm to cool peel side. Um, Premium Plus has a polyurethane based adhesive instead of a polyester adhesive. So that's a little bit of the chemistry of the material. So the adhesive on it is built definitely different, which is why you get the super stretch. I've heard some people say when they weed it, it feels like uh, almost like um, a, a texture of like a latex uh, balloon or, or something like that as far as how much it stretches and recovers. So We'll reload that in a second. All right, so let's see. Uh, a couple comments here I wanna pop up. I don't wanna lose everybody. So yeah, Premium Plus is definitely the softest vinyl. High tack is the best. We love Premium Plus and agree as a screen printer. Premium Plus feels better than screen printing. Um, yeah, Russ says Premium Plus is awesome. High tack is harder to weed, but great for small fonts and thin details. Hopefully the weeding uh, table helps. Yeah, if you heat up the high tack, that definitely will help uh, with the weeding. Um, and, and when you say weeding's tough, I assume you mean, um, because of the bond between the film and the carrier is tighter. If you're weeding big stuff, it tends to, uh, be a little bit tougher to pull and break easier. And that's where re really heating the material is going to help on your hot peel, uh, materials that you see out there. Um, yeah. And then cut line visibility is going to vary product on product. I will say generally, uh, white materials, it's tough to see uh, the cut lines, but if um, if if you're having a difficult time seeing the cut lines, I would definitely say try the different materials because there's a definite difference from product to product on cut line uh, visibility if that's uh, important for you. So I'm gonna move to our next product now. Um, I'll recut Premium Plus once we get to the cutter, and that is uh, thermal film. So give you a comparison here. Like ultra weed is 90 microns thick. Fashion film is 88 microns thick. Premium plus is like 85 to hundred microns thick, depending on the color. Thermal film is 190 microns thick. So I wanted to give you some scope of if you've used those products before and haven't used thermal film, the thickness on the garment. And what the majority of our customers use thermal film is in the athletic business. If you are in the team business or, or wish to enter the team business, you're not going to find a better product than thermal film because it's thick, it's tough, it doesn't let those polyester dyes bleed through. If you want to decorate mesh jerseys, it's going to have like the body 
to the material to be able to cover those mesh holes and, and still attach to the garment and stay extremely durable. Um, it's just one of our best selling products out there. And we also sell it in numbering that you can order loose and cut your names. And that's how you decorate a jersey for the lowest cost possible. But again, I like thermofilm a little bit for the fashion and the style of it. It is extremely easy to weed. So even without the weeding table on thermofilm, um, you don't get breaking at all. So if you want something quick to weed for like names and numbers, you're not going to beat thermofilm and probably see it better once we apply it. But it's like a semi gloss and it actually has a little bit of like a, a texture uh, to the material as well. And so I have used it before in a process that we call rip away applique, where you're actually using the thermofilm as an applique replacement, as a twill replacement. And it almost looks like leather when it's finished. It doesn't even look like vinyl if you choose like the brown or the black or the gray color and use it and, and, and lay a panel down on your embroidery machine. Uh, so a satin stitch around it, it actually perforates and cuts that material. You peel away the excess material where it's been perforated. You need to do a little denser satin stitch and then you finish it with a heat press. And now it becomes an applique material that you don't need to cut, you just sew. And the finish looks almost like leather. So I love that application for tone on tone, especially because nothing looks better than uh, doing like a high end item, like a, a black um, heavyweight hoodie with a uh, tone on tone black leather looking material. And I would even mark it as leather and not vinyl or faux leather and not vinyl. And so very easy to weed. We'll get ready to apply that here um, in a second. So I don't want to keep you waiting all day uh, to apply something. So what I'm going to do is we will recut the premium plus here in a second, but I want to apply these. I'm going to peek in for questions. You guys can feel free to ask questions throughout. Bring you up close as I can to the heat press. Uh, again, we're using our Stalls Max heat press. I'm going to be working with a uh, just a 100% cotton t-shirt like uh, jersey dress from Bella Canvas. Um, I will say that the materials are going to look the same, but sometimes the uh, coloring of the garment uh, matters on which product you'll choose. Uh, polyester versus uh, cotton tends to show the materials and the texture of the materials even a little bit different. So. Um, until you try the product across different fabrics and different weights of fabric as far as uh, finish and feel, uh, you can get some different results. And for those of you that consider yourself, you know, more of a designer brand, have a clothing line or something, you're going to definitely be a little bit more specific uh, in your needs and want to experience um, all of the different materials and uh, textures. Of course, you can buy a yard of everything and cut your own designs, but on the Stalls website, we also offer color swatches. So I've known a lot of customers to undo the, the little chain on the color swatches and just heat apply the swatches across the garment to get uh, the texture and that sort of element of it. All right, so I brought myself a cheat sheet here. I'm gonna take notes as we go so I don't lose track. So the first one that I'm gonna press down is Ultra Weed. I wanna give each product its own representation. So I'll press them one at a time here. Um, Ultra weed again can apply as low as 280 degrees on cotton, as low as 260 on uh, polyester. And um, it has that advantage of a fast tack, meaning if I'm layering, I can do a two second tack and I can hot peel the backing and um, be able to line up my second layer. And so I'll kind of show you the materials that have that feature. Fashion Film's another one. And so I'm going to put uh, fashion film directly below ultra weed so we can look at that and I'll give you a close up look here in a second. Cover sheets important because I'm going to have a lot of vinyl directly exposed to the heater here. So I'll be using that a lot today. We'll just tack the fashion film down. It's another one that works with a two second fast tack for layering. Uh, heating and reheating the material really shouldn't change uh, the sheen of it so much. Sometimes the craft paper or the Teflon can either like gloss it up more or mat it down more, but it's really not a huge uh, variance as far as that uh, look and finish. So the next one I'm gonna do down is Thermofilm. Again, Thermofilm is great because it works with the two second fast tack as well, which is really critical when you're doing uh, multicolor uh, sports numbering. And I think you'll really be able to pick out the difference here. So this isn't gonna be laundered, so I'm not worried about, you know, full application time here, but let's see if I can just show the difference. Let me uh, jot down my order because I will lose track. So Ultra Weed, 
uh, fashion film, and then thermal film. That's our one, two, three in order down the shirt. All right, let's take a look here. So I love tone on tone. I just think it looks sharp. Um, I'll try to give this to you at different angles with different lightings here. But on the uh, top one, and I'll take photos and post it, um, that's the ultra weed. So you see uh, nice matte finish uh, to it. I'd say it has a little bit, uh, it definitely has a little more gloss in the Premium Plus. I think it's right on uh, with fashion film, but it looks really good on there. We'll go down to the next one, which is uh, fashion film. Again, I really don't think it's the difference is negligible between ultra weed and fashion film. So I don't think you need to uh, stock both by any means. And then thermal film, which is quite a bit different. It may be tough to see here, but there's definitely a sheen and a gloss level and a texture level difference that you get on thermal film. Um, at this angle, they all look the same, but thermal film uh, looks really looks really nice. And again, it's thicker um, than the other two. The other two uh, feel about the same. I would say ultra weed is a little bit more stretchable uh, than fashion film. So that tends to give it a little, little bit more of a uh, soft feel. So hopefully that explains the difference between uh, some of those core products. So um, some of the other products that I have here to use uh, today as we go through, lots of cables here today to work with. Um, let's talk about the other products we're going to apply. So I picked uh, flock material as one material. So we're going to try that. I love flock. Um, for the texture element. So if you're doing a tonal result and want to add some texture element, our CAD Cut Flock 2, which is our latest flock product, is uh, great for that. It has a really nice high pile. So we're going to cut that together. We're also going to do the silicone material. So different than flock, silicone is like a rubbery texture. So this uh, brand insignia on, on my Under Armour shirt, anytime you feel that rubbery texture on these athletic wear shirts, that's a silicone-based screen print. You can get that look with silicone-based vinyl. Um, it's 200 microns thick, so it's similar to thermofilm from a thickness if you've used it before. Uh, Flock's a little bit thicker than that, stands off from the garment a little bit more. Um, this is actually black reflective. It, the color, it's tough to get black on a reflective because it starts as a silver base before it's colorized. Um, so you get more of a charcoal because you still want that reflective to show through. But the high vis uh, color reflect is a great product. And then a couple of the more versatile products that I think are underutilized, um, some of you know the secret, others don't, is in our printable product line for solvent printers, we carry two clear products. We carry a clear gloss in a clear matte. Um, I'll let you judge the results for yourself, but clears are really nice for tonal prints because they can be used across multiple colors of shirts. So stock one roll and a matte and a gloss, and now I can have like an etched and a wet look um, across any, I would say darker color shirt. They're really tough to distinguish on a white um, or a light colored shirt, unless you're looking for just very subtle, but on like royal blue, navy blue, uh, gray, uh, black, anything, uh, green, anything in the darker shades, they're going to show really well. So with that in mind, um, let's see, I'm going to start, I think, with the silicone. Um, and so we'll load that into uh, the vinyl cutter. Yeah, and Patrice mentions uh, she used glitter on polyester a lot. Glitter, I didn't select it today, um, but it's another great product for tone-on-tone uh, -tone printing um, is the glitter. I'm not going to Let's see, I'm using mainly 20 inch rolls. So I'll adjust my pinch rollers once and then I'm really not gonna pay attention to them just cause I'm trying to move through a wide variety of cuts here, but I am gonna have to do test cuts on my uh, materials. So using the GraphTech uh, CE6000, the latest is the CE7000. I've loaded our CAD cut silicone, which is the rubbery texture material. And I'm just gonna do a test cut. So while I'm doing this, Fun fact, for those of you that I'm friends with on Facebook, you probably saw the uh, photos, but I ventured into the dark side and went ahead and bought a Silhouette Cameo 4 cutter and had my first experience with that. Uh, a couple nights ago, I was teaching my daughter, who's 11 years old, who's starting to get an interest in some of this stuff, uh, how, to, how to cut and how to use a material and how to decorate shirts to make some gifts for friends. So we went ahead and got a silhouette uh, cameo cutter. And uh, let's just say that we did a video for the unboxing. She wants to edit it. Um, maybe we'll post it up on the stalls channel for fun, but 
I've made a lot of mistakes. Let's just say that on using it uh, to the point of embarrassment as far as being able to uh, load the material, do test cuts correctly, feed the material. Um, I think the cutter is actually easy to use. I'm not a big fan of manuals and I think I need to be. Um, and so that's just to help you all out. If you're new into vinyl cutting, um, I would just say budget some material, ask for some free samples wherever you buy your vinyl cutter from, hopefully from stalls and um, ask for some free samples. You can feel free to waste some material and experience, but test cutting, uh, doing all that's going to be uh, really important uh, so you can get the proper depth uh, for each material that you're cutting. So I just have a very simple, and I see some questions coming in. I have a very simple job I'm going to send here, that same uh, text, and I'm going to look back at some of the comments. I think Maria asked, how do you test uh, from the graph tech? Uh, there's actually a condition slash test button right on the control board. And when you hit that, it'll just cut a little square uh, with a triangle inside of it that looks like this. And basically you wanna weed out the square and leave the triangle behind because all of this heat transfer film, if you've never used it, it comes uh, with a carrier. And then with the film, if you're cutting too deeply, you're scoring the carrier and you're gonna wear down on the blade quicker than you need to and sometimes not cut corners as accurately. If you're not cutting deep enough, you're gonna end up like what I did here with my Premium Plus. Um, and, and when I'm weeding, the lettering was wanting to peel up and on fine detail, it just becomes a nightmare. So while I can get it to stay behind, um, this is a pretty big uh, design and that creates uh, a little bit more um, of a hold uh, to the vinyl. But yeah, there's just a test button right here. So I'm going to advance this out and I'm just going to trim it away. So silicone, uh, there's no advantage to weeding uh, silicone on the weeding panel. So after I get my next roll loaded and start to cut, I'll start to weed that for you so we can accomplish more in less time. I think the reflective is probably gonna cut at a similar downforce to the silicone. So I'm gonna load that one next. For those of you that own a silhouette cutter or a Cricut cutter, um, they're great little machines um, to get started. Um, I've heard a lot of you that, that love them and I think they're great machines, but I'm telling you there is a night and day difference, like a huge difference between a professional grade cutter like this that has a servo motor and then um, a desktop cutter that has a stepper motor. So while you can grow your business and add multiples of those cutters, um, at some point it's going to make sense to invest in a uh, professional grade cutter. I think you'll just, you're going to love the results and the straight feeding and, and being able to utilize all the material um, and feed a continuous roll and not have those issues. So we have the high-vis reflective. I'm going to do a test cut in it. I'm just going to advance the material. Let's see. I'm going to advance the material and get down to the front edge so I'm not wasting program my point of origin and then I just hit a uh, test button uh, on the screen and press enter for it to complete the test cut. Reflective does wear down on your cutter blade quite a bit um, but one of the reasons I love the reflective material is because you really just need a small logo to create a, a really nice uh, brand impression and so using reflective for like big sports and you know price conscious customers like schools probably not um, the right avenue but for those of you that um, deal with brands a lot um, or left chest logos or businesses i love uh, reflective and in in what it delivers uh, on a garment so i have this set up i need to advance it a little more because my material was not trimmed straight and let me send to the reflective and then we're going to weed together and I'm going to look at some questions. Okay. So silicone, pretty easy to see the cut lines. I think you can probably even see them in the screen there from my lights reflecting off of it. Um, it does not, <clears throat> excuse me, it does not have a sticky backing. So there's no resistance at all uh, when weeding. Um, but there is a little bit of breaking because it's a rubbery material. So uh, a good tip is if you're putting a weed border around uh, your silicone when you're weeding, um, which is the rectangle around the, the word or design, 
uh, maybe space it a little bit further away from your design. You'll use just a little more material, but you'll have a lot less uh, start and stop breaking. And you'll also notice that this is thick enough to where I'm able to basically just use my hands uh, to get to some of the details. The weeding tool will, of course, make it easier, but I can actually just grab it with my uh, fingernails and get to my design and weed it away. Now, for those of you that weed silicone, if you ever get um, a part that peels up, um, it is tough to position it back down because it doesn't have the sticky backing, but I've heard of customers that have used either just a, a squirt of like um, an aerosol can of hairspray uh, to be able to temporarily position it uh, back down and get a little bit of stickiness. And I've also heard of customers that have used um, just a dab from a glue stick to get something to hold down and that won't transfer um, over to your uh, finished garment. It'll just, as long as you just use a little dab, uh, you'll be fine. So that's weeded and ready to go. We'll press that here in a second. And let's go ahead and trim away this reflective material. Now, reflective is one of those materials that you'll want to utilize every square inch. As I mentioned earlier, it's expensive. So I do recommend you save every single scrap when you're using reflective material. We're wasting some material today because we're just doing one of everything. But start yourself a scrap bin, save strips like this. Those are easily loaded into, I'd say, nearly any style of cutter if you have the right know-how to be able to cut. And reflective is one of the easiest materials uh, to weed uh, this hive is reflective. You can do some super fine detail with this um, without an issue and without a whole lot of breaking uh, when weeding. Um, it has a slight tack, I would say, uh, to the adhesive, but it has a really nice bond uh, between the reflective product and the carrier. So if you wanna do uh, tonal prints, these are some of my favorite textures. Uh, the silicone product's going to give you that rubbery effect that stands off of the garment a little bit. The reflective is going to uh, give you some nice uh, contrast, but still have tonal, and it's also going to light up when a camera flash or headlights hit it, um, or it walks under street lights or something like that, or spotlights on the stage. And then the next one that we're going to cut together, uh, Flock, is one of my favorites because you get the uh, fuzzy texture to it. Now, a lot of people think you need a different blade. Uh, to cut flock. And while it's true that a higher angle blade is going to be better for thicker materials like flock or some of the other products that you see out there on the market like twill uh, that are super thick, um, the reality is if you just want to do a little bit of flock um, like I'm doing here today, you can actually cut it with the same uh, standard blade you have in your cutter. So typically a 45 degree blade, um, angle blade is going to be good for all of your basic heat transfer films. And then once you get up into really thick materials like flock and other materials, if you're going to do a lot of it, you want to go up closer to the 60 degree blade. Some manufacturers have 56, some are 64, but it's more in the 60 degree range. So that that um, higher angle on the blade exposes more of the sharp edge of the blade to the thicker material and makes for uh, cleaner cutting when you're working with it. So I'm going to try this at the same force that I'm at, uh, which is a... Uh, which is a 17 on this graph tech cutter. Um, also the equivalent of um, 170 grams of downforce on say a, a Roland or something like that. And we'll see if we get a good cut here. Yeah, it looks good enough for what we're looking to do, which is just cut one word. So um, I was able to cut the flock and the reflective uh, material at the same settings. All right, so I'm going to move my cut a little bit to the side of that, program my origin, and let's send that. And then we're going to heat apply a couple things together before I get to the next products. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I know this is a little bit different uh, from a content style to what we usually do, uh, working with a lot of different materials and cutting them live. But um, I do think that it's a good way to compare the products and learn more about maybe a product you haven't seen before. So again, I have done um, the ultra weed, the fashion film, and the thermal film on the shirt so far. I'm going to preheat this bottom area. I'm going to leave a little bit of space for my number four product, which will be a blank space for now, which will be premium plus. I'm going to come back to it. Then number five is going to be the silicone. And number six is going to be the high-vis color reflective. 
So silicone will lay down. Uh, silicone is a cold peel. Um, as the reflective, the reflective, I think we call it a cold peel on the website, but the reality is it varies based on the fabric you're applying to. And I know that sounds complicated, but if you're using uh, a synthetic fabric, so high poly content, high spandex, um, or even a tri-blend, you're going to get away with peeling most materials that are, say warm peel or cold peel a little bit warmer than if you're doing a cotton fabric, which if it says cold peel, you need to wait um, till it cools down quite a bit. So I'm going to try them both here together because neither one of these work with that fast tack I was talking about earlier. All of my other materials off the back, so I'm not worried about anything sticking to the heater. So I'm just going to press them together for the 10 seconds at the 300 degrees. That'll enough to get the to get them on the garment. And then we're going to wait definitely for the silicone uh, to cool down. I'm going to give the reflective about 10 to 15 seconds, start to peel, see if it'll release a little warmer for us off of this garment. It does. Once my sticky backing sticking to my silicone uh, backing cover sheet. So I need to hold that down to make sure it doesn't try to lift that at the same time. So we peeled the reflective um, after about 15 second cool down. And I'll move silicone off of the press to let that cool down. While we're waiting, let's take a look at the reflective. So again, I'll take some photos of this. You can see, but the reflective is really nice. You get that nice tonal effect, but like when you're at different angles from this and the light hits it, like you see it. And so I feel like if you want the the design to be better visibility, not just at nighttime when lights hit it, but even from across the room in daylight, um, you're going to get a little bit of that when the garment moves with the reflective. So I feel like a tonal look with the best visibility. And there are different colors in reflective too. So purples and pinks and oranges, reds. Um, so you can play with a lot of different styles of garments. All right. Let's, uh, silicone's pretty cold, so I should be able to start releasing that. I'm just going to peel it from the edge. And show you the finished result on that one. So it's really dark. It's a nice black shade. Almost can't even see it. It's actually right here above the reflective uh, from that angle. But when you get close, uh, you can see it, and it has some dimension uh, to it. So I can actually see an edge here when I look at across the material. Let me see if I can show you that. It's kind of tough to see through the camera. It's only 200 microns, not like 500 microns, something that's really thick, um, but the it has that rubbery feel um, and texture to it. So it gives you a good idea of a few of the choices that we're at so far. So the silicone almost looks like it's missing uh, from the mix there at this angle. You can see those top three products are similar with thermofilm being the third one down showing more of a gloss and a sheen coming off of it. And the reflective, of course, because I have a light on the other side, almost looks silver um, in this light, but it is uh, more of a charcoal um, of what we're seeing here. And there's, again, a close-up of the silicone. So let's uh, gonna take some more questions while I send the next job to my flock material. Did I do that? Yeah, I already did that. So let me just trim it off. So the uh, flock material right now is sold 20 inches wide. Um, a lot of these materials come 20 inches wide. Some do come 15 inches wide. Uh, very few, I think glitter and our CAD cut adhesive product, which we're not featuring here today, are the only products that actually come 12 inches wide right now. Uh, but we're looking to really as a strategy um, centralize on just a few materials instead of so many different materials that are nearly the same and then expand our color range in all of those products and expand our widths available since there are so many different cutters uh, on the market. So here's the flock. It's almost, I'd say brittle, right? It's very easy to kind of crack and not on the garment, but just to see the weeding lines to like bend and then uh, peel away the excess. Flock does tend to break a bit uh, when you're weeding it because it is a, uh, a fiber. Um, I know some people market it as, uh, I've seen it as velvet out there or velour. Um, and so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, the texture element that you get out of a flock uh, product. Uh, more people need to use flock. I think what the reason most people don't is they're intimidated uh, by cutting it. 
Um, it's really not that difficult to cut. You just need to order a yard, uh, try it out, uh, because when you decorate, you're not going to market this as a vinyl at all. So it's going to be um, a texture and a look that's really unrivaled by anything other than screen printing flock, which is a, in a lot of retail stores and is a royal pain in the butt uh, to be able to do. So let's get to um, our shirt and let's go ahead and press the flock down. Got a little wrinkle under there, try to get it flat. Um, I don't have this press on our caddy stand, which you can buy a counter stand that makes that press a cantilever design. Uh, you can also buy a floor stand to put the max or the auto clam on. And the reason a cantilever design is important, most of you that watch me know that's what I have in my home uh, studio, is because that will allow you to be able to split your garment and thread it on. And so when you get into different constructions that have like a horizontal or vertical seam on the back of the shirt, if you just lay that flat on the shirt, that seam's gonna print through and it's going to cause, um, it's, it's probably gonna do one of two things. It's gonna cause scorching or it's gonna cause um, like a marking in your design on the other side. So being able to uh, buy a stand for your press, I think is really important if you're gonna move outside of basic t-shirts and decorate more in your business. So um, I think I took the counter stand home from the studio. So that's where it's sitting. That's why this machine's not on it right here. So flock is a cold peel. So I've pressed it, gonna let it cool completely down. Again, this is our CAD cut flock two and we're getting ready to get to our clear materials here in a second. And yeah, some comments. Thanks for continuing to share your feedback, guys. Flock is great on hats as an alternative to embroidery. Yeah, I love it there. I love it for left chest logos as an alternative to direct embroidery. Um, for those of you that do sell embroidery, uh, don't discount the price of your embroidery. Go ahead and present Flock beside of it and say, hey, I have a good, better, best option, or at least I have a, a, a good and better option. Um, while we can't discount the embroidery, if you want to go with Flock, here's how much we can sell you that decorated polo for. Uh, let's see. Cutter I'm using is the Graftech CE6000. Uh, one of my favorite uh, cutters, the Graftech range. All right, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the training. Thanks for the kind words, Russ. Uh, yep, and I definitely make mistakes too. Uh, absolutely. Um, and here we go. Adam says, I avoid precision cuts on flock, but wonderful for larger fonts or images. So again, if you are going to do some precision work, like the um, the person that just left a comment on doing hats, and we talked about small logos, you may want to go with the higher angle blade uh, to be able to do that. And what do I think of the Cameo 4 Plus? So I haven't used the Plus. I just used the Cameo 4, which is the 12-inch version, because that's what I wanted to uh, start with. Um, I think it's a great little machine um, to get started with. Um, I think that if you're not going to buy a vinyl cutter or you don't have the budget for a vinyl cutter, um, I think that's a great price point to be able to offer personalized goods. So I would definitely recommend the investment, um, but it's not even in the same hemisphere as uh, the GraphTech or the Roland cutter. Um, so again, I know there's different budgets, different purposes. So I would recommend the machine. My experience with it was good once I figured it out and I'll learn more about it as I help my daughter with it. Um, but if you're really uh, doing a lot of business, you're doing jobs of like 20 shirts, 30 shirts, 40 shirts and getting some business rolling, you're gonna have so much more benefit um, using these more professional grade machines and you'll see the payoff. So my flock is cooled and it's a cold peel. It is a true cold peel. So I'm gonna let it cool completely down and then I'm gonna peel the backing from it. And I hope this comes through because it looks really nice. Um, but you see it, this is the flock uh, product. It's really nice for this uh, tone on tone look from a distance. You see it stand off a little bit more uh, than everything else, even though it kind of matches the color of the silicone, but because you have the uh, texture, the velvety uh, texture of it, it's tough to, to get there, but you can kind of see it's very soft and it kind of moves with the garment. So I've liked flock on fleece in the past, but flock looks equally good on a t-shirt, especially for this uh, tone on tone uh, sort of impact. So we're making our way. We're gonna get to the clear mat and the clear gloss. Let's get you at a distance so you can see it. So from the top, ultra weed, then we move down to fashion film. Then we have our thermal film. It's given that glossy sheen. I have a space uh, that's gonna be for premium plus. Tough to see, but um, third from the bottom is the silicone 200, which is rubbery in texture. The high-vis reflective is the second from the bottom, and the very bottom one is the one we just did. That's the flock two. 
All right, that brings me to a couple of my favorite uh, lesser known products, which is the clear matte and the clear gloss. Again, I wanna show you where to find these um, because these are a little tougher to find. Let's see if I can uh, move to my screen view here. There we go. Um, over on uh, stalls.com, if you go under the CAD cut section, um, heat transfer vinyl is where our normal products for vinyl cutting is found, but these are secretly hidden under the printable vinyl because these clear products that I'm about to use are printable. And you'll find them right here, SuperTech Gloss Clear and SuperTech Matte Clear. Okay, so they're right under the CAD Cut Direct and the printable vinyl uh, section of the, uh, of the website. So that way you know where to find them. And why are they there? Because you can reverse print them on a vinyl cutter. They are clear in nature. So anything that is on the shirt behind them is gonna show through. And uh, you can print ink on them and typically only for white shirts when you're using them that way. So this is the matte clear. Uh, I think it's 20 inches wide. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and load that uh, into the cutter. If you buy one product today and try it for tone on tone printing, I guess it'd probably be a toss up between the clear products, the reflective and the flock. But I think I would lean towards these two clear products because they're going to allow you to do a variety of shirts, uh, styles and, and colors with uh, one roll or two rolls clear and uh, gloss, uh, matte and gloss. Um, these are super duper thin. Um, I think I'll have to, I can look back at the website, but I want to say they're about 50, five, zero microns thick. So that's even half of the thickness of our traditional thin products like premium plus and ultra weed. Um, therefore my force on my cutter is going to have to come way down. So I was at 170 or 17 on the graph tech. I'm going to pull that all the way down to let's do a test cut at say, now let's start with a seven. And I'm gonna hit do a test cut, enter, find where my weeding tool went. There it is. All right, so I think I have a problem of a sharp blade uh, because that like literally perforated it. Um, I'm going to try to increase my downforce to see if I can uh, fight through that since we're live on air and I don't have a replacement blade here uh, in front of me but let me just increase to a nine and see if I can get at least something to come out of here. Otherwise, it's all right, I won't cut a word. I'll just cut a strip and we're still gonna press it together. All right, so that's a little better. It's still some hangups uh, on the corners. Um, we're gonna get an advanced tip uh, here uh, on the Graph Tech cutter. So one of the big differences when you go from a standard desktop cutter to a professional grade cutter is you get advanced features. So not only can you load a roll and track straight longer, um, you this Graph Tech has two big features that I love. One is called overcut. Another is tough to pronounce. It's called tangential emulation. Okay, so uh, let me explain overcut first. So overcut is when you're cutting something like a triangle or let's say the T in the word tonal and um, your cutter is having a tough time connecting the corners, like your 90 degree angles, or maybe you're cutting circles for like a rhinestone template, which is another thing you can do with uh, these cutters to brush rhinestones in, and you're getting a little hang up, so you're not getting your circles coming out right. When you enable overcut on the machine, that means the machine will actually go a little bit past the start, the end point will go a little bit past the start point on every uh, angle and character. And so on a square that looks like this, if I zoom into my 90 degree angles where it extends a little bit past it on both sides. We're talking millimeters, so it's not something you're gonna see in your finished product, but it is something that's going to help with weeding so you're not getting hangups and lifting. And so that overcut feature is something that can be enabled on the machine. Not exactly identical to the overcut feature, but somewhat like it and how it performs is that tangential emulation function. That again, that is something that you can turn on or off on the machine. The reason you would want to have it off is it takes a little longer to cut something uh, when it's turned on because what it's actually doing is it's emulating uh, something called tangential cutting. So tangential cutting is, um, let's just say this is the tip of my blade and my blade holder. Tangential cutting actually works that um, the machine will lift at that right angle corner 
it will actually rotate the blade, position it back down, and then start the other direction. Then lift, rotate, position back down, et cetera, right? So that's a tangential cutting technology. Now, most of these cutters that are in the sub $2,000 price point, um, that's kind of over-engineered for what we need to do here. Um, and so they, uh, GraphTech has come out with something called tangential emulation. So while it won't rotate the blade in the holder, what it will actually do is at your corners, it will lift the blade up. And what that does, I know this is getting technical, but um, this is a drag knife technology. So it's actually just dragging the blade along. The blade's not rotating uh, at all. Um, but what it does is it gives the blade an opportunity to reorient itself to go the other direction. So just by do going those 90 degrees, instead of just rounding the corner, it'll actually lift up. That drag knife blade will have a chance to stop. And when it meets back down, you start moving the other directions. That helps prevent hangups and skips particularly beneficial if you're cutting extremely thin stretchy materials, both of those things, overcut and tangential emulation, or extremely thick materials. Um, a lot of you may be using your cutter to cut pressure sensitive twill for applique. Those two settings are gonna come in handy when you're doing thick materials. Uh, even some of the thicker vinyls, we really don't have one that requires it flock, it would help, um, but there are some really thick vinyls that are out there on the market that you would be able to do that with. Uh, but anyways, let me see if I can get to that and remember how to get there. I believe it's in the menu. So I'm going to hit menu. We are going to go to – sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it before I tell you what to go to here in case you do have this cutter and want to follow it. Hmm, <laughs> Maybe it's under condition, sorry. Okay, yep, let me start over. You're gonna go to condition. So the condition button is shared with the test button. Um, we're gonna scroll down on that and you will have a, basically in the third menu, um, third step down into that condition setting. Um, so you can set it up for a certain condition and then rotate between presets. If you only need it for a certain type of material, it's, you don't have to change it every time. You can save it with the preset. Um, there's an overcut function. That's option three on the third menu. And then I can choose uh, the starting point for the overcut, enter that, and then the ending point for the overcut. So I'm just going to increase those to something above zero, press enter so it saves, and then uh, basically move out of that menu. In the same menu, I can put in tangential emulation. Again, it's basically off or on. And so I'm gonna say I want that on right now for this setting, save it. And now I'm ready to go back uh, to be able to send my job. Again, I'm not sure if that's gonna make the difference between cutting this accurately because of my blade, but it's gonna give me a better crack at it. And hopefully we learn something uh, today by doing that. Let's go ahead and send the job over and see how it does. I think you can actually hear it lifting. You hear it lifting, it kind of cuts differently. And because this product is clear, I can see the cut lines extremely well, uh, especially because I can already tell that it's not cutting the cut lines cleanly. And so because I don't have a sharp blade, I can see the cut, the material around the cut lines actually perforating and lifting a little bit. Um, and so it's just clear that I need a, a blade change on this, but we'll muck our way through it and we will get there. So let's trim out this so we can make sure we can get it down to a garment. We either do a strip of material or the cut. There's the clear mat. You can see the cut lines very good and you can even see the skips if you look closely at the corners of the end where it's turning the corners. Uh, that's a dead giveaway that I need to blade. So there, there's a new use for the clear material. Uh, Test your blade in it, and you'll know if you need to replace it. So that's our clear mat. I'll cut the clear gloss, and we'll weed them together and compare them on the shirt. So a lot of people always ask me, like, why do I love the Graph Tech Cutter? And it's, it's tough to explain simply, but hopefully you're understanding like with some of those advanced features, those are features that you can't even get on uh, comparable cutters uh, in its class. So when you look at it all from top to bottom, uh, straight tracking, um, the optical eye, which we don't use a whole lot since we don't sell a, a transfer paper at stalls, um, but 
overcut tangential emulation, the ability to cut in front of the pinch rollers to reduce material waste. I mean, I'm telling you, there's not a better 24 inch cutter on the market by my estimation. All right, so we'll send that and cut it. I'm not gonna do another test cut um, since I already did one on the other material. We'll just uh, give it a whirl and see what pans out here. Cause I know we're running a little bit close on time. We're gonna run a few minutes over today, but not by much. Uh, another trick is when weeding uh, clear materials, which comes in handy here, or uh, in the case of our CAD cut adhesive, which is used for our foil, uh, weeding on a black uh, background or dark color background as opposed to your normal, you know, if you have a white table or a wood table uh, like I have is going to make uh, a big difference. Now you won't need to, um, won't need to heat this when weeding. It's another cold peel product. I'm gonna babysit the edges down just to try to get the word out here. So if you do ever cut something and you have skipping, uh, one way to get around it is kind of follow the edges uh, around when you're weeding rather than just ripping at it and make sure that you kind of support the letter when you're weeding. Again, nothing that wouldn't be fixed with the change of a blade. And you can, we're gonna get through this one though, at least make the word out. Uh, clear material, you have to be very careful because sometimes you get scraps um, that want to uh, kind of stick with static uh, to the carrier. And so uh, those little extra details that would hang around. Um, and then also, if you're doing this, well, it looks better on black. If you're doing it on like, I don't know, a Columbia blue or a pink or something like that, it'll still work but you may want to keep a lint roller handy because again, it's clear. So if you have a stray piece of lint or hair or whatever it is that is in your design, that is going to uh, show through and it's going to ruin the look. So a lint roller by the heat press, uh, if you're going to use a lot of clear products, uh, even sublimation, people that are doing sublimation on their heat press probably already have that and understand what I'm saying there. Um, you'll want to make sure that's available. So here's our cut design. We can see it's ready to go. So you can see how it lifted on the edges. You get a little bit more of a mat there, but it shouldn't change uh, the applied finish. Let's go ahead and get the, that's our, that's our matte version. Let's go ahead and get the gloss version uh, trimmed off. Some of you are like, I just want to see it on the shirt already. Lots of hype here. I think you're going to like it, so. We're getting there, we're almost there, guys. All right, trim that. And weed the gloss version. The gloss version has a, trying to think of what can compare it to. For those of you that have done signs and have used like an over laminate, uh, material that's probably um, about what like the the texture and the feel of it um, it's definitely gloss when we put it on the garment it's going to look wet it's a big contrast to the matte version but I love having the two choices and you'll have to be careful when you're weeding it uh, I can definitely see it and I'll show you that here in a second so seeing the cut lines not an issue at all it's a it's a nice contrast to uh, to what you're doing. Let's show you here. That's very tough to see on camera, but you can kind of see the cut lines there in the center of the A that are still behind. Um, and then making sure that you've um, peeled all the areas is important because um, there's not a big contrast between the carrier and the film that's left behind. So when you're weeding, moving in a logical path to where you know from left to right or whatever you might, however you might weed, uh, what's left behind. Now I did point this out to you. I did accidentally lift the L again because of my cutting depth. So I have a little crease in the material right there that may show up in the garment. So I'm going to try to just gently lift this without penetrating the material and lay it down flat again without the crease, trying not to stretch the material. I was able to correct that uh, pretty easily. So now it's not there. And let's bring you up close to the heat press and apply these. All 
All right, so they'll go under the flock product that I had. And we'll be able to press them at the same time. I'm gonna start with the mat. Uh, for those of you that have ordered or have done laser etching on apparel, I like to compare the mat to like a laser etched finish. And I'm gonna put the gloss at the very bottom uh, behind that. We'll press them both together. And we're gonna cold peel here in a second. Uh, yeah, it's possible to order um, any of the materials we've talked about today with your design already cut. You'll kind of need to hack the system uh, for the clear product and order as a CAD prints or call into our customer service line um, so they can process a special order for you. Um, here's a comment. Craig says, use the matte clear on dark, works great. Use it on a light gray and you can't really see it. Yeah, so definitely more in the charcoal gray and darker is gonna be the, gonna be the product for the clear. This is always great to hear. Fusion C6000 made my life easy peasy. That's all we like to do. All right, I'm gonna let this cool down. You can almost see the difference in, in them already. The top is the mat, so you can see the carrier. You're actually getting the mat finish from the carrier and how we manufacture the material, whereas the gloss version is, is more of a glossy carrier. So um, we spend a lot of time engineering and manufacturing these materials for sometimes little, just little differences in the manufacturing process with the carrier or with the adhesive makes such a big difference in how it uh, performs in weeding uh, and on the garment. All right, so I think we're cooled down. So let me see if I can bring it here, get you a look at the peel. This is the gloss. Uh, 45 degree angle is always the best to peel. So you're not going against any of your straight edges. So you can see how it's like, it's super wet looking. I think it's really cool. And then the mat. Where again, it looks more laser etched. So you see the big difference. Let me bring you back out so we can compare them. So the very bottom one is the gloss. You get the wet, uh, depending on what direction you turn it turn it and then the one above it is the mat which is more of a laser etch type type look almost looks like the reflective with the light hitting it uh, right now now something I do want to try and we're going to try this is what if I hit these again I think that I'd like to see that mat uh, blend a little bit more in with the garment it looks good but I'm seeing more like texture in areas of the garment like where it feels like it's embedded in the fiber in some and not in others so let me grab my cover sheet which I lost and press those both for an extra five seconds to see if that changes uh, the finished result. About the same. I feel like I got a little bit better contact. The, the clear gloss dolled up a little bit, but you're still getting the wet effect. Um, the, the mat, you're still seeing like a variation based on the thread of the garment. If I get really close there, you can see this is the gloss. Really neat, almost looks like the thermofilm except super duper thin. Like you definitely can't feel this on the garment um, at all. The gloss you feel a little bit just because as you might imagine, it kind of has just a slight grip to it that catches your finger. Whereas the mat is just like uh, the finish of the garment. So um, that covers what I wanted to cover. The only thing I didn't get to was uh, recutting my premium plus design. So what I'm gonna do um, since we are running over, I, I do want to get it to the garment so you can see the difference. Um, but I also don't want to ruin my shirt. I feel like this is going to be a good shirt for a sample. So uh, I'm going to take some of your questions why I work to painfully uh, weed this premium plus uh, design so we can press it to the garment. It should only take me uh, a minute or two here. So let me look down at new comments and see what we have here. Uh, what are my thoughts on cooling blocks? I'm not sure I know what a cooling block is, to be honest. Um, I assume that's a pro that's a, an aftermarket product to uh, cool down the material a lot quicker. Maybe uh, ideally if it were on the press. I mean, we've, we've toyed with that here at Stalls on how can we make the cold peel products cool down quicker um, on the press. And so um, 
I mean, you can get a cooling block just like you can get a heat eraser or there's ways to hack it like anything. Um, and so how we've hacked it in the past is uh, even just like a cookie sheet and rotating through, you know, just several uh, cookie sheets or, or I don't know if there's another word for them, but I think everybody knows what a cookie sheet is. Um, that metal stays cold uh, to the touch and you should be able to just rest that against your garment while it's on the press and pull some of the heat out of your design uh, to be able to cool it on the press. We have another little accessory called a heat eraser. Um, you know, you can buy that and a lot of people like that, um, but you know, you can mirror that with a old shirt that maybe you ruined, um, just roll it up. And now you have something to rub against the product, to pull the heat out of it a little bit quicker um, after it's been pressed. All right, I'm getting there with this. So for you, for those of you that say I've tried Premium Plus and I don't like it, this is why you don't like it because it wasn't cut accurately. So I certainly wouldn't like it uh, using it much like this. It would take me way too much time to get anything done. But I'm telling you, um, and those of you that have commented have already attested to when you use um, a sharp blade, uh, you can fix that. And so I just didn't have a sharp enough blade for those super thin, stretchy, uh, clear products today or the Premium Plus. But even so. We got there very painfully. You can see where it's lifted up, where it wasn't cut accurately. That's where you're seeing the matte finish, but all the text is still on there. And so let's get that on our shirt for our final comparison. And then we'll put a big uh, bow on this episode and uh, answer any questions. All right, so I left a spot for the Premium Plus. We're gonna go ahead and lay that in there. This is the low tack. So it's gonna be more of a cool peel. Position it into place. I will use the cover sheet because I got a lot of different designs exposed to the heater and lock it down. So um, it was a heat eraser. And basically it's like a dry erase board eraser, just a little thing that helps to pull the heat out of your design. So a good example on how you would use it is if you press something like this and you were doing a multi-layer application, it were cold, you have that heat eraser tool, dry eraser um, eraser, and you just rub your design. Um, the heat transfers from the design to the heat eraser, or in this case to the garment, it's now hot. And that just helps pull it out a little bit quicker so you can peel uh, on the press uh, to be able to layer your next color without having to wait as long. So you see, I just did it with the t-shirt there. I'm able to peel this on the press without having to uh, wait as long if I were doing a multicolor. Let's take a look at that. So Premium Plus is gonna be the fourth one down, okay? So ultra weed, fashion film, thermal film, premium plus. Um, differences, some difference you're gonna see on finish. You may say they all look the same. You clearly see the difference in thermal film. I'll say premium plus in person is definitely the most matte finish. And it is by far the softest finish other than the two clear products um, on the garment. So let's go all the way back and take a look at this and go through all the materials. So one last time, top one, ultra weed. Second one, fashion film. Third one, thermal film. Fourth one, premium plus. Tough to see, I can see it in person. The fifth one is silicone. Um, after that is our high vis reflective. Then the really black one, third one from the bottom or next one in line is our flock two. Then it goes to the Super Tech Clear Matte. And then lastly, Super Tech Clear Gloss. So nine different materials, if I counted right today, uh, we got to learn and use those together. And hopefully um, you got a lot of uh, knowledge, not only about uh, the different products, but got inspired to do some tone on tone looks and try some products um, in your business. So let's take a couple questions and then we're gonna wrap this up. Um, is there a sample pack um, to show the different materials. So we have a variety of sample packs. Um, we'll share the links on our different platforms there um, before we conclude, hopefully. Um, definitely a premium plus sample pack, a thermo film, a fashion film. So all those core products have different sample packs. Some of the products like the high vis reflective and the flock, uh, you may just have to buy a one yard cut or again, a good way if you don't want to necessarily cut and weed and you just want to see the finish on the garment is request the color swatches and just apply those down. All right, a couple more questions. Um, 
kind of unrelated, but I'm going to take it anyways, is new to doing heat press stuff, interested in plastisol or water-based products for full color effects on umbrellas. Um, is that possible with any stalls products? Absolutely. If you go to our YouTube channel, our stalls TV YouTube channel, um, part of the stalls family of companies is Transfer Express. And we are the world's number one manufacturer of plastisol transfers and water-based transfers. And we have a new product out called Ultra Color that is, there's a recent video on, it's probably within the last 10 videos that talks about full color options. And also I've done, I think, two water-based transfer videos in the last, uh, this month. So you'll see those on our YouTube channel. You're going to love uh, the products and we'd be happy to help you with that over at Transfer Express. Um, color swatches, we've shared them. Here's the link, stalls.com slash heat dash transfer. Really long, you guys can read it. I'll leave that up there um, for a second. We're also sharing links to the sample packs and transferexpress.com for all your screen printed transfer needs. And good question about the flock. Um, all the flocks sold by stalls are the same uh, thickness. So it has a pretty nice pile. Uh, we think our flock is, I'd say more luxurious feeling than other flocks on the market with um, how raised it is and how soft it is comparatively speaking. That's the stalls flock two, which is our second generation uh, flock. It is not polyester based, so you cannot sublimate it. That's the only thing with our flock that I want to point out. Uh, but for traditional flock applications, it's awesome. All right, we're well over. So I want to thank you for your time. I only get to come to you, um, only coming to you twice live, right? But we're doing lots of static videos. I know uh, next week, Jenna will be broadcasting live again uh, on Monday and Thursday uh, to the places you're watching now. And then stay tuned because in August, we are going to just shift the schedule slightly. Jenna and I are going to keep rotating every other week but we're gonna to move to Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're planning your August already like we are, make sure you block out 11 o'clock Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, that just frees up time for our webinars to have their own slots on Monday. So lots of content, lots of help for you. Feel free to ask questions. As always, thanks for watching and hope you have an awesome rest of the week and a great weekend.